Good morning, good morning. It's that time again. Welcome to my channel. And you know what time it is. It's gin time. So today, it's a little chilly in the Sunshine State. Um, I'm not sure what the temperature is. It's probably like maybe 52 or something. But yeah, I'm opening my gate right now. And yes, people, I have to walk to open the gate because, as they say, Rome wasn't built in a day and it's expensive to have a motorized gate or whatever you want to call it. And it's a pretty long driveway. So, whatever. Give me a little bit of cardio. But anyway, so today, I didn't go to the gym yesterday and I didn't go Monday because I had to work late those two days and honestly yesterday I was just tired I did not feel like going after work hang on hang on hang on you know the routine got my C4 let's get in here real quick and oh let me show you this is my latest outfit from Ross and it is really really let me see how I can let you see it it's really nice don't mind me I have a tripod but um it's really cute and the shirt came with it too don't mind my little see so I think that was pretty good a nice little outfit and it was only $19.99 so go and cop it at your Ross Yes, girl, we got to look cute at the gym. Now, we look cute for ourselves. I look cute all the time, but anyway, no. I just like, it's a comfortable outfit, and I, as I was saying, you know, it's a comfortable outfit, and it just gives me a little boost to go to the gym when I get something nice to wear to the gym instead of wearing the old t-shirt and I don't even know if people do that anymore old t-shirt and um sweatpants I've never worn sweatpants like that to the gym though unless it's like really really cold when I was in the military um but I got grease or something on my watch so anyway so today we are we're probably gonna do and I have my lip gloss on. Check me out, lick my lips. Yeah, girl. You know, I bought a new one of the C4 and they changed the scoop. And the scoop is actually bigger. And I saw that and I'm like, okay, maybe it's just, it was wider, but it is bigger because that drink is a lot stronger. Maybe I should have read the direction. Maybe I only needed a half a scoop. But anyway, today we're going to do, I'm probably going to do a full body workout today. Not sure. I don't have a lot of time, um, but I'm going to try and squeeze in as much as I can because I'm pressed for time today because I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. But anyway, and my son has a half a day today from school, but my husband's going to pick him up. But no, my husband, he's going to call me and see if I can run and get him on my way because it's right around the corner from the house like literally like not even five minutes ten minutes whatever but <clears throat> I need to talk to you guys today about something that's been heavy on my heart I, in actuality it was a decision that I made and honestly I believe it this that that the decision I made was the worst decision and from you see the you're gonna see because I'm gonna put it in the title and uh, so you'll know what it is before you even click on my video. But watch my video. I mean, if, if give me your opinion. Hold on, let me do this. I don't know why you're looking in the ceiling. But anyway, I think my tummy hurt just now. The sick. Anyway, so my son started school when he was, he went to K3, K4, and he, it was at a Catholic, uh, not a Catholic, I'm sorry, a Christian school. And he 
has been at this the, that Christian school all the way up until the end of fourth grade. So fifth grade, we decided to take him out because he loves sports and at the Christian school, the, they're limited on sports. It's only really for high schoolers and it's still a small, you know, their sports program isn't really all that. And because it's a, a Christian school and most Christian schools, especially smaller Christian schools, um, it's, it's a lot of kids that go there, but the sports program is not big. It's really, really small. So we wanted to kind of transition him. And the reason why we put him into private school was because he was ready for school at three. He already knew how to spell his name, his ABC. He knew everything. Like he could have really went to kindergarten at that age because between my mom, his sisters, myself, my husband, we actually worked with him from the time, you know, he could say something, we were teaching him stuff. So he's advanced. So right now he's actually a grade ahead. He's supposed to be in fourth grade and he's in fifth grade. He gets all A's. Um, since he's been going to school, he's been on the A, the honor roll, the A, I, I think maybe twice he's been on the A, B honor roll where he missed it like maybe a point. And trust me, that point tore him up, whatever. But anyway, so he's very good in school. So we transitioned him in hopes of getting him more involved in sports um eventually once he gets to middle school because sixth, sixth grade is middle school here so we wanted to kind of transition him into it so we did it and he was so excited because no more uniforms now he gets to wear grow his hair as long as he wants to he doesn't have to wear a tie and whatever to, ch to chapel day and whatever the, the, tie, the tie didn't really bother him. It was the hair. He wanted to grow his hair long like his dad. Whatever. Um, he didn't complain about the schoolwork. The schoolwork, he loved it. Uh, did well at it. Um, didn't complain about homework. Didn't complain about nothing. So that wasn't why. And that has nothing to do with why we took him out. It was mostly because we wanted to transition him into team sports and playing sports in school because he's very athletic. He plays baseball, been playing since he was three years old, and he swims, So he and he plays basketball. So he, he wants to do football too and whatever, which we're not even gonna talk about football, he's not doing that one, but anyway. So that's another video. So anyway, so the, the first week of school, everything was all right, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we went to open house and it was okay. I was still transitioning. Now, even though I do have older kids that went to public school, but that was years ago. The difference, let me tell you the difference. My oldest is 26, so you figure when she was in middle school, um, elementary school, and my other one is 20. So it's been a couple years, so I've been out of the loop. So, but in saying that, they went to a different, my, my oldest went to actually a Catholic elementary school. My second one, because I was in the military, so I went, it was different places. My second one went to a new school here in the same area, but it was like, back then it was called a magnet school. It still is, but the magnet school, what they're calling magnet school now is a little different. But this school focused on science and uh, math and science. But it wasn't like public. It wasn't like the regular public school. They actually learned something there. They had homework. They had textbooks. They had a lot of different programs. They had a music program. They had so many different things. So my second eldest went there from kindergarten all the way up until eighth grade. Ninth grade, she had to go to. She went to high school because it went up to K through eight. Eighth grade, yeah. So. <clears throat> I love that school. I've been trying to get my son to get into that school for about five, four years now. And it's almost impossible. You cannot, you have to be in a lotto and whatever. It's bull. Anyway, we won't go there. That's an whatever. So, um, basically, so we went to the, the first couple of weeks of school. We went to open house. It was a little different. Uh, number one. We're gonna skip ahead. So my son right now, he gets 
maybe three problems for math homework maybe once a week let's back up first of all his one teacher was on maternity leave which was fine okay so he had a couple of substitute teachers then they didn't have a math teacher they had another substitute for math so they went through several substitute teachers for science that was one teacher science and something else she, she taught they went through probably about, probably about six different subs till she came back from maternity leave which I totally get and I totally understand now the math part of it the math teacher they've been through probably 10 11 of them one came and she was supposed to be the permanent one and all of a sudden she up and left right after we did like an in-house in open house and you know she was you know talked and I really liked her I have no idea why she left whatever so basically these kids went the whole half of the school year because we're half this is the second they're into the third grade in period if I'm not mistaken right because we had two report cards already yeah I think so I think this is like the third nine weeks or so whatever so they've been through so many people already and they still don't have a permanent math teacher the good thing is my son is very good at math so he aces everything but what did he really learn nothing what he's learned is what he figured out or what I have showed him okay now we pay school taxes so I don't mind teaching my child because I'm I've always done it they I teach my my kids do school work throughout the summer there's no break from school you don't do as much but guess what in the summer you get two weeks off or sometime a week but when I'm generous I give you two weeks off and then it's school work every morning when you wake up and you read throughout the, the, the summer okay no days off for that because you got to keep their minds going so I'm used to teaching my child I don't mind but if I am paying you with tax my taxes because I was getting charged double taxes well double because I was paying for private school and I still had to pay school taxes not that I'm complaining but I am complaining so give me what I'm paying for give me a teacher that's and then give me something and see what ticks me off of public school is and the teacher told me this we I'm like no textbook for social studies history whatever you want to call it these days I'm like I was baffled they give them a magazine it's like a magazine newspaper clipping not magazine newspaper like a part of a newspaper and they read it <clears throat> excuse me and then answer the doggone questions right so this man working at the side of the street somebody almost anyway so I'm like okay no books for that no science book comes home no math book the first thing they did was when they sent home the math homework it was on a copied piece of paper and the teacher looked or whoever looked like they copied four pages on one page so just imagine how small that was I could not even read it I'm like how do you expect the kids to read it and then write in that small space and these are fifth graders it's not like they're high school kids to where most kids put it like this I'm not even a kid I am older than 30 a lot older than 30 and a lot older than 40 and I can't even write small I have to really concentrate to write and fill what I'm filling out a form to really fit everything there because I write big just imagine a kid having to write I mean I'm gonna show you later in another video of what his work looked like his in the pages and I'm like, just send me the page. I'll copy it. I'll pay to copy it so my son doesn't have to strain his freaking eyes. Okay? And so um, that was one problem. No math textbooks, right? So even if I'm stuck on a problem, okay, well, I'm pretty good at math. But say I was an older a grandma and this is new math. You have no freaking guidance on, okay, let me read the textbook so I could kind of figure out so I could help little Johnny nothing 
Yes, we have internet. Yes, we have all uh, the, the the computer, but. We're, we're talking about not everybody's proficient at using a computer. I'm talking about for grandmas that are raising their, their, their grandkids. And there's some parents that aren't computer literate. So why don't we have textbooks for at least math, at least history? Why, are we te why aren't they teaching the kids history? I, I, I was so baffled. I'm like, so you don't have to know what happened in 1908? To, to you know it, it was like I just can't understand and this is why our society is the way it is because guess what the kids aren't learning anything the, our society as a whole educational wise is going down the drain that's why so many more parents are leaning towards homeschool and I was always an advocate for homeschool but I could never do it because I work full-time so I could never never really do it okay but I'm glad I have the luxury right now because my son is older and I work from home three days out of the week. It's a blessing. My husband has a schedule to where he could work around his schedule and fit it into where he's there to help monitor my son. Hopefully. Just kidding. But being said it was like okay so when we went to we did a they did a little open house and they were like yeah no textbooks and whatever and we teach basically what they told me is we teach to pass the freaking f cap when i heard that you know and i'm not gonna say what school or what what teacher but because but when I said when I heard that because I don't want to get anybody in trouble but she's not the first one because I went online and I looked and that's exactly what they do they teach the pass the damn excuse me the freaking F cat all right what the heck teach these kids how to how to live in society, how to balance a checkbook, how to add numbers together, how to, to, to history about whatever, about America, about world history. Yes, you get that when you get into the higher grades, but start it now. I mean, they used to. When I went to school, we did that. You know, not that I remember anything, but yeah, I, I knew something happened. Bermuda Triangle, I knew something, I might not know everything, remember everything about it, but these kids are freaking clueless about anything until they get to uh, high school and middle school, and then they're gonna be like, oh, really, that happened? Come on now, all right, whatever. Anyway, let's go to spelling. In his old school, the Christian Academy, he had to know how to spell the words, how to use it in a sentence, the synonym and antonym of the word okay if you don't want to know what synonym and antonyms are they that's another video the the so he had to not only know how to spell it okay so he gets the spelling words and I'm like okay all right Let's spell these words. And I'm like, okay, so we gotta write sentences or part, know how to use them in a sentence, whatever. And he said no. So I, I, on the class dojo, whatever you wanna call it, so I messaged the teacher and, let me drink this. While well, I'm in the Ross parking lot, I don't even know why I even drove in the Ross parking lot. My mind is on shopping. Lord Jesus. Excuse me, I just burped. But anyway, so he was like, no. So I, 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 I messaged the teacher and she said, no, they just have to know how to spell the word. And they have to write three inputs in their journal either and they give you a list of stuff you need first of all she didn't even explain that to me so the first week he didn't do it they assumed everyone was coming back from public school and knew and know what was required and that was the that was the the first thing the first test my son did he got an 80 on it in in the, in the spelling and he was upset he came home and he said 
What is a dictation, mom? I said, huh? I know what a dictation is, but I didn't know what a dictation for elementary school was. I think that's what it's called, dictation. I don't even remember, whatever. So again, I had to message her and why my son got an 80. And she was like, well, at the bottom, he was supposed to do a dictation. I said, well, what exactly is that? And then I explained to her that we're coming from private school. They didn't have to do that. So did you explain to him what he needed to do? She said, oh no, we assumed he knew how to do it because all the other kids knew how to do it. I said, well, he didn't do public school last year. So she said, oh, okay. So I'm like, will he be able to retake that portion of the, the dictation? So she explained to me what a dictation was. She was she would say something and they had to write it. Would that have been hard for you to tell my son that since he didn't know what it was and he told you he didn't know what it was? Would it have been that hard for you to just explain to him, write what I'm saying? Really? So needless to say, the grades, he got all the spelling answers right, but he didn't do the dictation because he didn't know what the dictation was. So that grade stood. So I was already mad about that, but water under the bridge, because I know my son, he gonna ace every dang thing. So everything else after that, he has aced it. Once he figured out, what, once we figured out what a dang dictation was. Anyway, so public school, you don't have to know how to use the word in a sentence. You don't even have to know what it means. You don't, you, you just have to know how to spell the dang words. But to me is okay, you know how to spell a dang word, but if you don't even know what the word means, what is the benefit, people? Not my YouTubers. I'm just talking about school, the Board of Education, whoever writes these freaking curriculum, whoever decided that we teach that the kids teach, the teachers teach to pass the freaking FCAT. I am so, so against public school right now. Seriously. I've always wondered why our kids are getting, yes, I'm, I'm gonna say it, dumber and dumber. Now, if your child is not dumb, I'm not calling your child dumb. I'm not calling, I'm just saying, as a society, the children becoming dumber adults because they're not being taught anything in school okay i'm not saying all kids that go to public school are dumb i'm not saying that but there are parents who are playing active roles and are teaching their kids beyond what the public school system is teaching them and i applaud you for that and that is awesome i love that okay but if we are paying all these taxes why aren't we why aren't our, the, the kids being taught anything you know, that, that's just what takes me off. Anyway, I'm at the gym now, and I didn't talk about nothing about fitness. I'm just going on a rant because, yeah. So, the worst mistake of my life was pulling my son out of private school and putting him into public school. And I haven't even touched on half the stuff. Science. He doesn't even have a science no, science textbook. Then they copy all this stuff and stick it in a notebook, which <sighs> some kids are neat and some aren't. Most kids aren't neat, so it looks like crap. I don't know. In a, the private school, he's required to write stuff in his agenda, so the parents know what is required, let me take this, what is required or what is due. He doesn't have to do it. All he writes in the spelling, in the book, the agenda, is his spelling words. And that's it. So why are we even, why did we even, and then I had to purchase the agenda. Why did I purchase the agenda? Just so I could know the date? Honey, I have my books from, uh, get my books from Ross, my calendars from Ross. So I don't need to know the dates, okay? So why are the kids, why do we have to purchase the agenda when the kids are not gonna write in the agenda? Can you answer that one for me? Okay. I have so much to rant about in pub public school. It's like, let me, I'm gonna say this. So. Last week, 
I get a text from, okay, before that, the teacher would tell me that he finishes his work first and then he just stands up for no reason. So I'm like, okay, I told him, I said, Junior, do not stand up. If you're finished, just find something else to do, read and whatever. If you finish reading, do something, you know, just sit there. So I told the teacher, if he's finishing that much faster than everybody else, give him extra stuff to do. Give him stuff to hand out, give him papers to put together, give him an extra worksheet, whatever. Give him something, I don't care. Let him, let him wipe the walls. I don't care, okay? Because I know what it is. He is not being challenged and he is getting bored because I know if I'm finished with something, I can't just sit there and not do anything. I will get bored and then I'm gonna wanna go to the bathroom and then I'm gonna wanna put my head on the desk. Then I just wanna, my mind is gonna wander all over the place. So I know as a child where that would lead. So I told her, just give him extra work to do or something. So this was like about um, two months, uh, maybe about the beginning of the school year was when we had that conversation. All right, I'm gonna step right out here and put on my um, waist trainer in the meantime while I'm chatting to you guys. Oh, that's not good. Anyway, let me just finish saying what I'm saying. So anyway, so um, Friday, she sent me a, a text. Uh, excuse me, a message saying that Ed, uh, my son got up out of his seat and uh, I'm going to probably try and insert. He got up out of his seat and uh, then he was mumbling something on his way back to his seat. So you mean to tell me You couldn't handle that situation. You had to text me to tell me that my son got up out of his seat to come to your desk. Okay. So I asked my son, I said, why did you get up out your seat? He goes, mom, I got a 98 on the thing on my test and it says, see me. And usually she does that when she wants to give you the, the, the like bucks, like they give you like play money when you do well or whatever the case may be. So he was going to, it says see me. So he said, so he said it wasn't during when she was given um, instructions. It was during the time that they're allowed to ask questions and different stuff. So he just got up or whatever. So I don't know if she had said right then and there, okay, nobody comes up to my desk. I don't know that portion of it, but if I'm a child, and, or if my boss comes to my, put something under my door and says, see me, even though he might have different things that he has going on that I know of. But if I get a message to say, see me, I'm coming to see you. So he got up to see her because it says, see me. So he was trying to explain to her that my paper says, see me. And because he's explaining it to her, that's talking back. Okay. I'm not going to say my son is right. And I'm not going to say he's wrong. Because I was not there to know the whole situation. I didn't even want to ask the teacher. That This was the final straw for me. I didn't want to even conversate with her. I just told her that I will take care of it. Okay? So... Because I, I know regardless, he's going to be the one wrong. But if you have seen me on the paper, whatever. So we're not even going to go there. So anyway, so that was like the final straw. The, ca the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, my, the, the camel back here was already broken because I was, I was already thinking about taking him out of public school. Anyway, I've been contemplating it for the longest. When I'm waking up and I can't sleep because I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I made this decision to put him there. And when I'm looking, my son has no homework. I don't see nothing in his bags. Yes, he's getting grades. Yes, he's passing. He's getting great, awesome grades. But I need him to be more occupied, to do something. Then I went, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to buy some workbooks. Well, I have some workbooks that he used in the summertime. I was going to let him start doing some of those schoolwork. The, the, the sum of the work to keep him, you know, his brain going because 
he finishes his two, three math problems in like five minutes. Nothing to think about. Then the studying of the words, and listen, people, they, this is how they did the do the words. They do the words to where all the words, all the words, let me lean in this way, all the words pretty much go, like, like, like for example, I don't even know how, it, there's a term for it, but I can't think of it, think of it right now. It's like selfless, hopeless, senseless. People, we're in fifth grade. Break it up a little bit. Senseless, important, caution. Don't give me all the selfless, all the less, 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 less words together. The kids are, they, they're going to figure, I mean, they, they, and I'm no teacher. Don't want to be. I don't have the patience for it. And, you know, and especially in society, like how it is now where the kids could tell you where to go and where to kiss and, and, and they, you can't say nothing to them and you can't slap them and you can't, you just have to sit there and then the, the, the kids slap you and you can't slap them back. <laughs> Honey, I could not be a teacher. No, sir. Because the minute you raise your hands at me, buddy, the minute you raise your hands, if I was a teacher, hmm, the minute you think about hitting me, you will see Jesus. <laughs> No, but seriously, seriously, I, I'm making light of this situation. But honestly, people, you know, if you could do homeschool or whatever, Christian school, whatever, for your kids, do it. Do it. It's worth it. It's not worth it. Your kids aren't learning nothing in public school. Now, this is Florida. I don't know about other states. I went to school in New York. Standards were a lot different in New York than Florida. Because I had relatives that were in Florida and we were on different levels. Like New York was a higher standard. I don't know how New York is. I don't know how your state is. I'm speaking about Florida. My, and I think, I'm not even going to say my county because it's a statewide thing. So I'm not even going to say my county. I'm going to say the state of Florida. Public school is not what it used to be. It's not what it's supposed to be. I have no idea why it, it has changed so much you know I don't know I don't know anyway I gotta get in here to the gym so I will continue this rant in a little bit so I see oh my goodness I almost locked my keys in the car doing this rant um, because luckily I had a window crack but yeah and let's not talk about all these half a days teachers day Okay, I understand they need their days to do whatever. But dang, if you're not even teaching my child throughout the year, why do you need so many teachers' day? My teachers never used to have teachers' day, and they used to get our papers graded and everything in hand. We didn't have computers back in the days, like how they have it now, to where everything is accessible online. And then, so my, but my teachers got the work done. So why do you need so many teachers' day? You know? Anyway. Alrighty, I am back. In the middle of the road. Parking lot. Just got done with the gym. That was a short workout. Short, but good. What, what, can you speak? Hang on. Adjust you a little bit so you can see me fully. That was a good workout. Uh, it wasn't long. Because my husband called me and he's running late to pick up the boy. It's a half a day. So I am left the gym to go and get him. So, but I did a little bit of cardio. I did some squats and I did some lower body. A lower body. I didn't do a full body workout. And it is hot now. I am like literally burning up in this. So, as I stated, it's a half a day, uh, teacher's day or whatever they call it. So I'll be picking him up and I'm going to do a separate video unboxing his stuff when I get his school stuff in the mail. So and I will tell you, explain a little bit more of the 
the curriculum that I, I swear it never fails. People just constantly call me. I have no idea. I don't even know that number. But anyway, and I am starving, starving, starving. But I, I only had a half of, not even a half, I had like maybe three bites of peanut butter, uh, peanut butter jelly sandwich. Um, and a, a few sips of mint tea. I don't know, I just felt like that breakfast today. And I haven't had anything else, and it's been a couple of hours, so I should have had a snack, but I didn't. So I am hungry. Now I have to wait in line to pick him up, <clears throat> and then head on back home to my work so as I said my gym was cut short so I'm gonna have to make up and do something extra I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do something later because I'm gonna be reorganizing my loft area in preparation for his homeschool and even though um, they gave me the 17th of February to start once I get the stuff in, I think I'm going to start him sooner than that. He doesn't know that yet, though. He's excited. He is ready. He wanted to start today. And I'm like, no, honey, I didn't get your books yet. So, no, no, no. So, I, I know I'm not going to have a problem with him getting caught up from for the, you know, the weeks that he met, wasted time in public school. Because he's pretty good with that. Once I, you know, once I get him to settle down and he knows he has to do this, or else he's going back, which he's not. But you know, you have to tell them that. But that's all right because guess what? I know how to get him to focus and do things. All I have to do is take that video game and the TV, and guess what? That's a wrap. And his, all his little electronic gadgets. So, but he's normally pretty good. He only gives me a hard time like. If I'm trying to give him extra stuff, like say during the summer, you know, and I'm trying to get him, he's only 10, but I'm trying to get him to understand that if you get your work done first, do everything you're supposed to do, and I guess that's why you're called kids, you know, children, you kind of don't think that way, is after you finish that, then you could do whatever, and you won't have to hear my mouth, I won't bug you once you get everything done. See. I don't know, I was a different child. But I would get everything done to where my mom didn't have to tell me, oh, do this, whatever. Not to say she didn't add stuff because it was done. So she would do that, would add more stuff. I'm like, dang, I did this, I did that, I did that, I did that. Now you're gonna add some more, mom? It was hard being an only child because you had to do pretty much everything. You didn't have siblings to share the chores with. But that's all right though. Whatever. It made me a better person because guess what? Now I'm not scared to work. I'm not scared to work extra. My work, work ethics, I think is awesome. Probably too, uh, too good. And my educational ethics, I think are pretty much, my standards are really high. Like my kids know, do not bring home no C's and that I stuck with that with them from elementary school all the way through high school I don't care when my daughter went to college actually to college I tell them still uh, no C's I remember once my oldest daughter said mom C's are degrees C's it's a saying I guess they had in college C's, C's gets degrees or some foolish things like that I'm like I'm like no 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 we do A's and B's, but we aim for A's. I don't even like B's. Like my son will tell you, mom does not like B's. A's, 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 right? Now, if you almost the A, 89, we all right, but you still gonna get a little lecture from me. Why couldn't you just get that one extra point? I believe you set your standards high and reach for the the, un the, the, the universe or wherever it was, whatever the highest point is, don't grab for the stars or the clouds. 
Because that's too close to earth. You're gonna fall. Aim high. Always light. Like I tell my kids, I said, set your standards so high, like try to outdo me. I set my goals. I, I wanted to outdo my mom. My mom had a nursing degree and she had a bachelor's degree. No. Yeah, she had a bachelor's degree. Okay? I wanted to set my standards higher than my mom because I have more opportunity now than she did. So guess what? I set my standards and I have my master's degree and I've had my cosmetology license and I've had different things that I've accomplished in the past. So I'm not just, I, I think I'm kind of versatile in different things. So I can, if something God forbid was to happen in one area of my occupation, I could pick, up, pick it up somewhere else. And, you know, so I, I try to tell my kids to be versatile like that to where I tell my daughters, I'm like, and my son, I'm like, your mom has a master's degree. So you better get a master's degree or higher. Don't settle for an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. Because guess what? Those degrees right now, the competition is so stiff that a bachelor's degree is like everybody has one now. Not to say everybody doesn't, a bachelor's degree is not good or whatever, not saying that, but I'm just saying, if you want to be competitive, you have to set yourself above and beyond your, your um, peers. So, if everybody's coming into a job with a bachelor's degree, what's going to separate you? Yes, you might bring more experience or whatever, but we're talking about on paper. So, if you have master's, not that I mean a lot of people have masters but not as many people have masters than they do a, a bachelor's degree so you gotta kind of the bar is a little bit higher now so you gotta you gotta aim high you know I really want my, my oldest to actually go for her PhD or actually she could have been a doctor she could have been a lawyer this child is so smart but she does not, and actually both my kids are very smart. But one did not, one, they want nothing to do with the medical field. And my, my youngest daughter, she is into culinary. Awesome cook, awesome baker. That, I mean, I, I'm proud of my children. My, my oldest is in marketing, but she's actually wants to pursue something in arts and she does not like to sit still so she hates being stuck behind a desk so she's in the process of trying to find something else that she wants to do along the lines of her passion anyway so needless to say is the thing is to tell your children to aim higher and try to outdo you as far as their achievements you know what i mean don't don't settle for if your mom has a associate's degree don't settle for a high school diploma you know what i mean not saying a high school diploma isn't that but set yourself above your competitors and that's all i have to say on that so that is why i take education very serious and i don't want to be the downfall of my kids not getting the proper education where I could make a little sacrifice and give them the best education that I think, you know, would be beneficial to them in the long run. So that is why I guess I was having sleepless nights and tormented days that I made the decision to take my son out of private school. Yes, I wanted to save money, but did I really save money? No, that money is not in the bank. I have no idea where the money is that we were spending every month with him going to private school. So, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? So that's pretty much, I'm gonna say it's wasted money because we found something else to do with that money other than saving the money. So where did we really benefit from that? The only benefit I can say is that I realized that public school is not for me. I have different standards that I want my children to have. There's an educational level that I want my kids to meet and public school is not giving it to them. 
I'm not gonna say all public schools. I don't know whatever city you live in, town, state, whatever, I don't know. I am speaking specifically about the area that I live in and the state that I live in. And as I said, I'm pretty sure that this is a state cur statewide curriculum, just like how they have the statewide assessment. It's a statewide curriculum that every school follows, every public school. I'm not happy about that. Another thing too, what I wasn't quite happy about with why I kind of wanted to transition out of um, Christian school, and I forgot to talk about that. this. And this was another thing that weighed, that was a factor, was I chose to send my son to a Christian school to get the, 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 the religious aspect of it, smaller classrooms, more one-on-one, -on -one, and the better education, okay? So, I was happy with that, but after about, I'm gonna say probably about three years, they've changed it to where I guess because the area we live in was growing and I think it's across this is across the state of Florida I'm not sure about anywhere else but the schools are um, crowded they don't have enough schools for the children that's in the area I'm not sure about everybody else's area but I'm speaking for my area per se so what they did was they offer um, uh, not scholarship. Uh, yeah, I think it is called a scholarship, or I'm not sure exactly what it's called. To where, if your kid is in public, private school, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If your child is in public school, they'll give you a grant to where they could attend private school, regardless of if, regardless of if they are religious or not, if they believe in God or not. If you want your child to go to pri private school, the government pays for it, pays everything, okay? I don't know the whole behind story of it. It might go according to your income. I don't know. I did not qualify for a penny. I didn't try, but I know I didn't because there's a, a, a income bracket you have to go through, okay? So... Not to say every kid shouldn't get the best education. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, I work, my husband work, we make sacrifices to send our kid to a Christian school and to get the smaller classroom, the more one-on-one. -on -one. So after the, I'm saying three years after it, he's into school, they started growing where they started bringing in, you know, Public, the different public school children I'm calling them public school kids just so you can kind, of, kind of know the difference to where they could start attending the school they pay for their uniforms they pay for tuition everything everything was free for those certain people okay the problem with that is my son's um, classrooms were maybe seven children seven to eight children in the beginning when it got to, I think, I'm going to say about second grade, it started growing. It went from 7 to about 12, 13. All right. It's growing, but whatever. Then the next year, it, every year after that, it just started getting more and more kids to where at one point it was like 21 children in the class from 7 to 21. You do the math and we're paying for private school, right? So it went from seven to 21. Guess what? That's the same amount of children in public schools, classroom, public schools, classroom. So your child, you're paying for a private education, but your child is not really getting that one-on-one -on -one anymore. That was really, a, 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 what do you, what's the word I'm looking for? That was a concern of mine, a, a big concern. The school was proud that they're growing. Not saying they didn't get the same education, but they did not get that one-on-one. -on -one. Then you had to where different level of education was in the classroom, rather than most of the kids that was in my son's second grade class were from kindergarten. So they kind of were on a separate, uh, uh, 
almost the same level. Yes, some are were smarter than others and whatever the case may be, I totally understand that. But once you start mixing public school in there, especially in my area, seeing what I'm going through now, you had some kids where that were here and then you had kids were here and so they had to go through the basic to teach these kids while these kids started becoming bored and the teacher couldn't really do more one-on-one. -on -one. Now if the classroom was smaller, then she could bridge that gap, spend time with the ones that are slower and keep these still going. So it got to the point to where, I'm just gonna show you to where this is how the classroom is because this is the kids that's been into the system, know the books, not say know the books, but familiar with the education, the curriculum. And then you have the public school coming in and so they were being taught on a level like this now this one's not moving so they were on a level like this and you know trying to get these caught up so in the meantime these are still learning but not at the rate they were going before i don't i could have moved my son up another grade but i didn't want to do that because i want him to still be a child I didn't want to put him so far ahead. He's already going to be in college at six, at 15, going on 16. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't want to put him in college at 14. To me, that's, that's, that, that's too much. I mean, even though he can handle the load, but I don't want to do that to him because I don't want him to become socially awkward. Not saying that happens to everybody, but I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to move him too. I want him to kind of still be a kid, enjoy being a kid. So needless to say, that was another problem in our area also. And it wasn't just that school, the, the Christian school he was attending. It was all the private schools did that. The government funded them. And they liked the funds because guess what? The school made more money which I'm not knocking them for it. But the thing is, if I, and, and the, my son came home and he was singing a song when, when everything started happening, um, when he was in, going into sec, second or third grade, I can't remember, when the public school, it was more of a public school, more of the kids were coming from public school to where it was more public school kids transferring into the school than the kids that were in the private school, right? Because the rate, as I said, the ratio. And my son came home before he would come home singing Christian songs and Bible songs and whatever. And he came home one day and he was singing something. I don't know if it's the, I don't know, well, I can't remember what song it was. It's like, maybe that Watch Me Whip, whatever song that, whatever that song is, I don't even know. And I was like, what? I said, did you learn that in, in, um, in school today? He was like, yeah. I said, they, they taught you that in class? And you know, I was being funny. He was like, no, mom. It was uh, the, when we were on the playground. And I'm like, you've been going to school since you were three years old. You've never come, you've never came home singing no foolishness. And I was just like, boy, you know, I know you can't shelter them forever, but I just didn't expect that, not in a Christian school. But when you allow everybody to come in, and half, some of the people don't even believe in God, but because the government is paying for free private school, oh, I'm gonna throw my son over here. You know what I mean? Standards are going down. It has gone down, even with the private school. Not that, I'm not saying the education wise hasn't gone down, but has gone down. Because they're using a very good curriculum. But, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just bummed, but that's all right. We're gonna fix it took me a few months to kind of say all right you know what I was just hoping and praying it got better but it's not getting better it's not not at all so anyway guys I'm just gonna close out this video right now and it has been a pleasure my pleasure so please like and subscribe to my channel and share and leave a comment Leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about. If you feel what I'm feeling right now, you know, because I'm feeling some kind of way. But, um, yeah, I'm fixing this. Anyway, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.